I'm joined by Graham Bell. He's a strategist at Old Mutual Equities. Graham, so good to have you with us today, as always. For a moment, Greece is on the back burner, which comes as much relief to uh, investors who might be fatigued by Greece headlines. But let's turn our attention on to the U.S. Uh, as we've all known, the all eyes have been on the Fed for quite a while now, given the fact that they will increase interest rates uh, before 2016. But now that we have that confirmation from Janet Yellen herself once again, uh, does this guarantee some kind of certainty in the market? going forward? Hi, Gugu. Well, the U.S. rate consensus has been <coughs> converging on September now for, for many months. So it's no surprise that Janet Yellen is helping us to get to a date that we can all agree on. Of course, it's always data dependent. So in the next few weeks, we might get data which makes us think otherwise. But at the moment, that's where we are at the moment. Um, a September rate hike doesn't mean that rates will then go up every Fed meeting for the next year and a half. Quite the contrary, uh, Janet Yellen has been very careful to guide that it will continue to be data dependent and so each <coughs> Fed meeting will have to, have to wait to see what the data is going to be and it's quite possible that the glide path for U.S. interest rates will be very gradual in this cycle. Having said that, Graham, would we be worried about what the impact will be on uh, emerging market and especially South African fixed income uh, markets? Uh, look, Ugu, as, as I've always said and we've chatted about it a few times, probably volatility does pick up as the actual day arrives or just before the day arrives. Um, but because the Fed has been so careful to guide for such a long period of time and the expectations have been converging around September for so long, it looks like the amount of volatility will actually be pretty limited. And you know, as we've seen, there have been loads of other events which could also have caused volatility over the past few weeks. Um, indeed, um, you, might, you, you, you mentioned that the Greece is off the headlines, but in fact, um, we might find that Greece is right back in the headlines by the end of today because there's a very important vote taking place in the Greek parliament right now. And um, Alexis Tsipras and his uh, party need to make sure that no more than 40 of the, of the so-called rebels within Syriza uh, vote against the, this, this program, this new deal. Um, so, you know, the, the opposition party comes to his, uh, his support, but... Um, he needs to have at least um, a minimum of, uh, of his own party to be on, on his own side. Um, if that doesn't happen, then you know, we're back into turmoil again. But the most interesting thing, I think, of all of these things, you know, we had the, Greek, the, the Chinese um, market going up and going down. Um, we've had this Iranian deal that suddenly had a historic close yesterday. And through all of these periods and bouts of volatility <coughs> and f negotiations that have been fraught with tension, Markets have actually been pretty steady, bond markets and equity markets. Been some sell-offs here and there, but uh, very quickly they've recovered their ground. So I don't think we should be too concerned about the Fed, about Greece, about China or, or anything else. I think the underlying global growth situation is still pretty steady, and I think there's good reason for equities to continue to perform. What about China? Because uh, that's obviously the key area of concern still. Uh, should we still be nervous about what's uh, going to unfold from that particular region? Yes, because there's a lot of margin credit. So people have been able to borrow to buy into the market. And it's been, a, particularly in the retail market, um, <coughs> it's been a close your eyes and buy in China until very recently. And then it became close your eyes and sell. And there's a huge amount of margin lending. People don't really know exactly what the number is, but it went from something like you know, two, or two or 300 billion renminbi last year to probably something like two and a half to even three trillion renminbi in a very short space of time. So people are borrowing to get, to get, uh, to make money. And of course, when it goes the wrong way, they then have to extinguish those debts and they get called and uh, they can get into a horrible, into a horrible amount of, tr of trouble. And there's still quite a lot of margin credit um, out there. It's contracted a bit, but it's still there. So it's uncertain. We don't really know. But the market is not nearly as expensive as it was, particularly the eight shares in Hong Kong. And um, so there's been a pullback. And um, the underlying situation, as you mentioned just now, there's been some, some pickup in the growth. So there's probably s some improvement in profitability for Chinese companies. So 
some volatility still, but I don't think it's an all fall down situation which could cause disruption globally. Does this then present a buying opportunity for quality stocks from a global perspective? Yeah, there's always <laughs> quality stocks is where you want to be and um, you know, any pullbacks are, would be an opportunity to get into good high quality equities with good growth potential. Um, those with decent dividend yields are also, you know, also offer, offer good opportunities and that's what investors should be looking out for. Mm. Well, should we be nervous about the oil impact then and maybe uh, 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 be very careful when it comes to selecting oil producing companies given what we're seeing unfolding with the oil price as well as deals around Iran that you alluded to earlier? Look, the oil market is complicated. Um, certainly Iran will be coming on with more oil over the next, over the next year. But this, of course, is dependent on U.S. Congress uh, passing this deal. Um, it looks like it will be very difficult for the Republicans to oppose it because I at the end of the day, they would actually have, a, have to have a two-thirds majority in both houses of Congress to override any veto from, from the president. So it looks like the deal will go through. So therefore, Iran comes back into the market with up to another million barrels of oil over the next year. Um, you've also got Iraqi supply picking up, uh, has been picking up, and then the Saudis are still threatening to increase their supply. So there is a lot of oil around, and it's, it probably is going to hang over the market for a while. But demand for oil has also been quite, quite buoyant. And so global oil demand is probably rising at like one and a half million barrels of oil a day, um, year on year. So by this time next year, that extra demand will have been able to absorb quite a lot of extra supply. So in the short run, I think um, probably some downward pressure on oil, but looking out a year or two um, with the demand picking up and you know, resource depletion, particularly in some of the, uh, the US shale, shale oil fields and so on, probably some pr pretty solid support for, for the oil price coming through down the track. Graham, thank you so much for your time and analysis of the global market space, giving us his local view. That was Graham Bell, who is a strategist at Old Mutual Equities.